In a recent training video with Justin Lee, I sumo deadlifted 600 pounds, which was not only lifetime PR, but also the goal for the entire year. And so, I've been getting many questions on how my performance exploded. And that's where we get today. A full breakdown on the method, starting with what the sumo deadlift requires. If you examine the squat hinge continuum by Greg Knuckles, you will clearly see they are less hingy than trap bar deadlifts and conventional. Meaning that proportionally speaking, the quads are more emphasized than the spinal rectors. Obviously still being worked, but there is a scale here. The purest form of a hip hinge being RDL, stiff leg, good morning. And the extreme opposite being a pure squat where the quads are highly engaged. The sumo is kind of in the middle. And so, how does this apply to a guy like me? Well, if you're familiar with my work, you'll know that I've been really, really lazy with lower body training, intentionally leaving my quads smaller because I did not want that X taper physique. Always found it to be unesthetically appealing. And so I've always been hyper-focused on the posterior chain. Hence why my deadlift was elite for my body weight, the squat was far from it. Therefore, what do you think happened when I finally started doing squats seriously? Setting a goal of 500 pounds, which I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. So I'd say I'm good for about 200 kilos right now. Well, my quads got way thicker. They're now at 25 and a half inches cold. And all of my leg wear is so much tighter. When you improve your hypertrophy in an area that's been holding you back for so long, because I always say that you're only strong as your weakest link and you must train what you suck at. When you actually do that, leave your ego aside, stop making excuses, oh, I'm gonna have this tree trunk, tell it, tell me physique. When you do what's required for you, the carryover and general strength is insane. And that would have to be one of the major secrets, balancing out the hinges and the squats. Of course, this will matter less at the super elite level, but when you're still building your strength, and in my case, definitely nowhere near my potential, Obviously, raising the squat to a certain extent has helped my deadlift, specifically for breaking loads off the floor, which is very important on a sumo deadlift. As you guys know, that is the hardest part of the lift, whereas with conventional, it is common to fail lockouts. With sumo, it's either one explosive pull or nothing. Usually, there'll be less grind, like maybe a little bit at the top, but if you can get away moving off the floor, in most cases, you're good. And that is precisely what I needed. Quads were one of my worst body parts, but now they're finally catching up. In addition, when I talk about squatting, it's not just do a ball back squat and lift as heavy as you can. There is a specific intention to bias the quadriceps because if you're a posterior chain dominant lifter, what are you going to gravitate towards? Wide stance, low bar squats in which you're sitting back a lot, minimizing that knee flexion. So you might get way stronger, which is of course gonna help you regardless, but might not get the same proportional stimulus to the front part of your leg. And that was basically me. So what was the solution? Wearing squat shoes. Heel elevation is one of the greatest secrets for biasing your quads. And right now on the screen, I'll put a comparison photo that really demonstrates this. You get on a wedge that's 10 to 20 degrees higher, Man, the effects are extremely noticeable, especially when you do high bar squats. But in my case, even though I mix in high bar and low bar, the number one variation would hands down be the SSB squat. I abuse this thing like no other. First of all, you need a lot more upper back when you're using it, and you're obviously not gonna have it super low on your back. And even if you did, you aren't gonna bend forward all the way like a low bar squat. So it's a very upright way of doing things and they're harder by about 15%, AKA getting more or less weight. So if you can do 300 pounds for three sets of 10 on a straight bar, you'll be able to easily hit over three plates for that exact same prescription. And that's not over exaggeration. So to sum things up, if you incorporate all the squats, but generally favor the quad bias versions, and that is your specific weak link, you should see amazing improvements in leg drive, more so than only relying on poles. In the past, I've historically done 
trap bar deadlifts and hack deadlifts, which I still incorporate in my max effort rotations, which I also believe have been helpful. And then for conventional, I'll do narrow with the feet turned out to get more leg drive in. But all this to say, it's not only about the glutes, hamstrings, and lower back, especially on a sumo where you are going to be a little bit more upright and the knee angle is obviously more open. So that's how I will introduce this video. It's important, but I'll also say this, not the most significant factor that led to these gains. So how about we cover the real money right now? Guys, it's obviously not the squats that got me to pull 600 because even at that, I'm not the best. There's a lot of you that mock me just to say. Like before I started doing this stuff, I was already pulling 565. So this is a 40 pound PR, some of it coming from improved quad strength, but a lot of it likely from advancing my posterior chain to a level that you guys have never seen before. And I would also state that I was likely good for more than 600, maybe 610, 625. So to cut to the point, the secret to my gains has been volume hip hinges, but specifically on good mornings. Look at my Instagram clips. Look at the B-roll over the last two years. You have seen the progressive overload right before your very eyes, where 155 pounds used to be heavy. Now, first of all, when I started doing good mornings, it was with an empty barbell, 45 pounds. And I microloaded my weight, five pounds a session, never going beyond, always maintaining perfect form, building the movement pattern, ensuring that I don't get snapped up. Because if you guys have been watching me for some time, you'll know in 2017, I did some serious ego lifting. Didn't want to repeat that. Sometimes I will sit in the chair for too long and my lower back hurts. Sometimes I'm in an excruciating pain and I need to do some reverse hypers or some uh, like traction work for the spine. And I believe that good mornings is what's caused this because I haven't done any other exercise recently, just the good mornings, and now my lower back is hurting. And so it was basic linear progression. Until I hit a bit over a plate, I started messing with different variations. That's when the low bar was introduced. I started using the SSB and playing around with different rep ranges. And at the very end of my cut last year, I was doing three sets of 10 with 185, and they were difficult. I would say I had about one rep left in the tank for all three sets. And I remember seeing comments like, Alex, why are you using such light weights to build your pole? Shouldn't you just deadlift more to get better at deadlifting? Isn't that the most specific way? I was like, nah, it ain't about that. I'm just focusing on general strength and the fact that if I can hypertrophy the primary movers, get way more volume in, especially with a guy like me who doesn't have good leverages, then that's gonna pay off in the end. And I trusted the process, sticking to these loads that on paper don't seem like much, but if you study biomechanics, you'll know that it does amount to a lot. The moment arms is where I'm getting at. Your good morning will be about 150 pounds less than your RDL. And I've proven this time and time again, taking my four or five RDL for low reps to 15, and now I can probably do a lot more. So I'm ranting at this point, but I wanna cover everything about this exercise. A few months ago, you saw me build up to two plates for three by 10, had a few reps in reserve. Recently, I did two plates for 20 reps, as well as 265 for three sets of 10 and 300 pounds for lower repetitions. So if I were to estimate about how many pounds I added to this lift on my volume work, it's about 100 pounds. And that is absolutely serious. Psychotic, as a matter of fact, because this isn't a one rep max we're talking about. If you say, oh yeah, I added 100 pounds in a year to my one rep, you're like, wow, that's good. But no, I'm talking about three sets of 10 and even turning those into 20 rep maxes. And so my glutes and hamstrings got even bigger, actually got some serious pop going on, as well as my spinal erectors finally being corrected because they used to be one of my weakest areas. Now, I would say I'm damn near bulletproof because of all these good mornings. They're so freaking difficult. So I've basically been doing a good six sets a week to build the posterior chain. And it's a pure hip hinge. So what happens when you take a pure hip hinge with a pure squat? You combine it, and you get wicked strong 
that's sumo dead. And of course, I'm stronger other variations as well. You recently saw me pull 550 on the low handle trap part deadlift. And again, I'm probably good for more right now, but I digress. Guys, strength is strength. I keep stressing this to you year after year. How many more examples do I have to show you? We saw it on the bench press, the overhead press, the calisthenics world, now legs, me, the guy who skipped them for so long. Maybe, just maybe, you don't need extreme specificity to acquire elite strength. Not that I don't recommend that, I would still argue it's the fastest and best way. But know that the way I do things is very generalized. You're constantly getting bigger and stronger, it's a slow progression, but it's just your base performance. You're not peak, you don't have to. That's really how I did it, guys. I took my sweet ass time on good mornings. And moving forward, I'm gonna keep doing that. This month, I'll probably hit three by 10 with 275. And then over the next coming months, I wanna get to three plates for three sets of 10. Could you imagine what that's gonna do to my pull? So once I have all this general performance established, then I can do a specialization phase and you're gonna see an even crazier PR if I so choose to do that. But honestly, I'm good with these numbers. Like part of the club and it's really the squad that needs to get pushed higher. But anyway, that's about it. I'm gonna keep talking about good mornings and lower body segments and check out my IG where I'm showing you the actual clips. And also this video on RDLs versus good mornings because it covers all the fundamentals that you need to know, including some awesome variations. Besides that, I hope you learned some things. Please give quad by squats a shot as well as actually taking your good morning seriously. We use good form, progressively microload, don't get snapped up, don't ego lift, and you're going to see that the general strength gains are incredible, just like I've been experiencing. And moving forward, I'm just gonna continue trusting this process, getting stronger at those two, expecting my Wonder Max to constantly climb. So that's it. And now I wanna know your feedback in the comments section. How much carryover have you experienced? Let's hear it. And I'll talk to you all next time.